Minisang, konnichiwa. Samurai engineer this. In this video, we will now go to the next chapter, chapter five, with the title Cost Behavior Analysis and Use. So there are several instances, several chapters, wherein we tackle the system design, different cost systems. Now, we will now analyze and use these uh, cost systems regarding as to their behavior. So let us uh, continue. So our uh, first module, we have the learning goal to understand how fixed and variable costs behave and how to use them to predict cost. So let us um, start with this uh, information in uh, mind. So there are types of cost behavior patterns. Recall the summary of our cost behavior discussion from chapter one. Oh. You can still recall, we have uh, two types of cost, variable and fixed. So for variable in total, Total variable cost is proportional to the activity level within the relevant range. Okay, so it is proportional. When we are talking of in terms of total. So what about okay? Sorry about that. We have, we have technical difficulties right now. Please wait. So while uh, we're waiting due to uh, technical errors, uh, the uh, page will uh, again Come back like uh, you are seeing now. So we have summary table, and uh, we are comparing variable and fixed for uh, activity base. So we have a measure of what causes the incurrence of variable cost. How does uh, the company or business incurred? Variable cost. It uh, depends on what units produced, machine hours, miles driven, mean uh, transporting the goods or delivering the goods, labor hours. So there are a lot to uh, consider. Through variable cost example, a variable cost is a cost whose total dollar amount varies in direct proportion to changes in the activity level. Not only dollar amount uh, in our country, we are using peso, so peso amount. Uh, what uh, matter most is the, there is a graph wherein we can, for example, um, create a graphical relationship uh, of minute stock versus uh, total long distance when we are talking of telephone use. So the bill would be what? Would be proportional to how long you talk using your telephone. So that is uh, an instance of proportionality, direct proportion. As uh, the minutes of use increases, the total telephone bill would also increase proportionately. Uh, recall that uh, this, uh, uh, if we are talking of uh, per unit rather than the total amount, Variable cost per unit remains the same over wide range of activity. 
So, constant per unit amount. But in total, it is proportional. But when we are talking of per unit, constant. Like uh, on the previous uh, slides, example of telephone use, the charge per minute is constant. It, it is usually fixed and uh, therefore, uh, the variable cost per unit remains the same. It is the same for uh, per minute. For example, 10 pesos per minute, okay? Oh, that is the characteristic when we are talking of variable cost. As an example, a variable cost remains constant if expressed on a per unit basis, just like we had uh, explained. Okay, so when uh, you are graphing the relationship minutes versus uh, per minute telephone change, that is constant. So Okay. For example, here, that is $10 per minute. In our country, I think in our country is 20 pesos per, per minute. Uh, can somebody um, comment on that, if that is correct or not? Or uh, you can inform us, you can uh, help us uh, make it uh, correct uh, data. So if you know, what is the uh, telephone charge in our country? Please uh, put it on the comment uh, section below. So, well, next is uh, the extent of variable cost. The proportion of variable cost differs across organizations. For example, a public utility with large investment in equipment will tend to have fewer variable cost. Of course. It is understandable. So it differs from another organization, for example, a manufacturing company will often have many variable costs because uh, there are so many what um, uh, products, for example. And uh, the uh, there are uh, mass production also. So if there are mass production, meaning uh, the output of the manufacturing plant per uh, day, per week, or per hour is uh, a lot of uh, products produced. Okay? Uh, therefore, it is uh, affected by variable cost. So uh, in relation, in comparison with the uh, public utility, with large investment in equipment. Okay. Uh, another example is a service company will normally have a high proportion of variable cost. Okay. A merchandising company usually will have a high proportion of variable cost, like cost of sales. Okay, so commission, it involves cost of sale. So those commission are dependent on the number of uh, products uh, sold. So that is variable, directly proportional. Okay, so those are the extent of the cost characteristic when we are talking about variable cost. What are other example uh, as we have uh, already mentioned? Number one, merchandising companies cost of goods. Number two, manufacturing companies, what are the variable costs? Direct materials, direct labor, and variable overhead. When we are talking of merchandising in manufacturing companies, commissions, just like what I've said, shipping cost, clerical cost, they are in proportion to the bulk of activity, to the bulk of transactions, being entered into, engaged into by the company, such as invoicing. So if there are uh, too few engagement, uh, therefore the variable cost will not affect very much. But if there are so many transactions, 
therefore the variable cost also affects the company so much. And another thing, service companies, what are the example? Supplies in the service company. The more services demanded by the consumers, the more we need supplies to uh, satisfy those needs. Travel, okay, and uh, clerical work. So as you can see here, there is a resistor. This resistor is not a fixed. This is a variable resistor. If you are, uh, if you are uh, in BSIT electrical or BSIT electronics, you know that this resistor is a variable resistor. Or if you are electrical engineering student, or uh, maybe even mechanical engineering student and uh, automotive student. Maybe you know that the symbol here is a variable resistor. So just to give an impression that uh, the value is not fixed. Okay? True variable cost, direct material is true or proportionately variable cost because the amount used during a period will vary in direct proportion to the level of production activity. So just like uh, in the graph uh, below, we have volume versus cost diagram, and you will notice there is a straight line, meaning as the volume increases, the cost also increases proportionately. Okay. Uh, meaning of proportionately, if the volume increased by 10%, the cost will increase by 10%. That is what we mean by proportionately. If the volume increases by 30%, the cost should increase by 30%, not other percent. So that is uh, what we mean by proportion, proportionately, okay? direct proportion. Step variable cost, a resource that is obtainable only in large chunks, such as maintenance workers. We have uh, instant payment for maintenance work, maintenance job, or maintenance contract. For example, painting of the building. It is not uh, all the time. Maybe it will be scheduled two days, three days, or one week and the painting works will be done. And therefore, you have to pay for it. So that is variable cost, but a step variable cost. Okay, It is not uh, applicable all the time. It is only applicable at certain period of time and certain volume. Okay? For example, if uh, your company has uh, three buildings, three manufacturing sites, uh, painting one building, then painting another building, painting another building, would uh, result into different stepwise variable costing. Okay? Okay, step variable cost for each of the building. Okay? Step variable cost continued, the small changes in the level of production are not likely to have any effect on the number of maintenance workers employed. This is true, okay? Okay, and take note, changes in the level of production, okay, small changes, small changes in the level of production are not likely to have any effect on the number of maintenance workers employed. Because for example, maintenance for the building, even if you are producing 1,000 pieces of bicycle per month and the following month you are producing uh, only 800 units of bicycle, the maintenance work will still the same. Okay, so that is what we mean by this. No? Uh, the deterioration of the paint, of the building paint, will be the same, no matter how much is your production number. 
Okay. Step variable cost uh, continued on the fairly wide changes in the activity level will cause a change in the number of maintenance workers employed. Fairly wide changes. If there is a substantial change in the activity level, eh, there is now um, the effect to the number of employees employed uh, maintenance worker, for example. Okay? So for example, uh, uh, the normal production of bicycle is 1,000. Fairly wide changes is uh, what we call, for example, we increase our production to 3,000 or 5,000 rather than 1,000, which is the normal. If we increase that way, the uh, the movement of the uh, production workers, the movement of the person, the activity of the persons, the resources, materials, and uh, human resources would increase. And because those abrupt increase, not a small increase, but very wide increase in the activity. Because of that activity, the building would uh, deteriorate faster because somebody will bump more than enough. Okay, the uh, walls, okay, equipments will uh, damage the walls, for example, because of this so many activities, and therefore the paint will be damaged, will deteriorate faster. That's why we need uh, to adjust the maintenance worker. Okay. Instead of, for example, the maintenance painting would uh, require us to uh, do it every six months. Now, we have to do it every three months or every two months because of that increased activity. So, there is a what? Uh, effect. The linearity assumption in the relevant trains. Economist or the linear cost function. Let's uh, take a look. Linearity means it is a straight line. It is a straight line. And I, uh, in the previous uh, graph, uh, we saw straight lines in the graph. But here, we are uh, given curvilinear. This is curve. It's not a straight line. So this is a economist curvilinear cost function. Okay. They usually use this. They usually apply this uh, curve function. Okay, just uh, put it in our mind. Be aware of this uh, thing. And uh, we will uh, try to apply it in our own um, way, in our own experience. So activity versus total cost. If you are talking of linear, so the red line is what we call the linear or the accountant's straight line approximation, which has what? Constant unit variable cost. It has a constant unit variable cost. Okay. So the green curvilinear function would be represented by this red portion. So economist realistic curvilinear function against the approximation made by the outcome. Okay. Relevant trains. Relevant trains, as you know, is only from this point to this point because outside the trains, red and green already very widely. There is a, what, a noticeable variation. There is no, no congruent, there's no similarity with the value, okay? So a straight line closely approximates a curvilinear variable cost line within the relevant, relevant trains only. So just uh, find out from and two points. There are two points that you have to find out, this one and this one. 
So the initial or minimum value and maximum value of what we are looking at activity. Okay. Types of cost behavior patterns continued. So let us complete, uh, let us um, add another concept to this uh, table in terms of total cost and under the fixed one, total fixed cost remains the same even when the activity level changes within, within the relevant range. Okay, within the relevant range. You know the relevant range. So, Outside the relevant range, our uh, conclusion, our assumption will not be correct. Okay, so this is uh, what we mean. Total uh, fixed cost remains the same when the activity level changes within the relevant range. A fixed cost is a cost whose total dollar amount or peso amount remains constant as the activity level changes. What do you mean by this? Your monthly phone bill is constant. Your Wi-Fi uh, bill is constant per month. Okay? Even though you use your Wi-Fi service or you don't use your Wi-Fi service, you will pay the same amount per month. That is a fixed cost. Types of cost behavior patterns continued. Uh, let us complete the table now under the peaks. Talking about per unit, fixed cost per unit goes down as activity level goes up. That is an uh, important thing here. Okay. Uh, if we need to, to make the uh, fixed cost to go down, we need more activity. We need more and more activity. That's why if we have a monthly Wi-Fi bill of 1,000 per month and uh, we only use the uh, Wi-Fi 100 hours per month, therefore 1,000 divided by 100, that is 10 peso per hour. That is our uh, payment. We are paying 10 pesos per hour. In order to lower that, we need uh, to use our to use our Wi-Fi, for example, 500 hours rather than 100. So 1,000 divided by 500, that is two. So instead of paying 10 pesos, we are now paying two pesos per hour. That is what we mean by Fixed cost per unit goes down. The fixed cost per unit goes down from 10 pesos to 2 pesos because we use the Wi-Fi so many times. From what? From 100 hours to 500 hours. So meaning our activity level goes up. That's what we mean by this. By this, fixed cost per unit goes down as activity level goes up. Okay. Fixed cost per unit example, uh, average uh, fixed cost per unit decreases as the activity level increases. The fixed cost per local call decreases as more and more local calls are made. Uh, that's how, because we have what? Fixed monthly uh, bill. So that's why we need to use the telephone more. Types of fixed cost, committed, long-term, uh, cannot be significantly reduced in the short-term. Example, depreciation on buildings and equipment and real estate taxes. They are usually uh, constant amount. Uh, discretionary fixed cost may be altered in the short term by current managerial decision. This is where our managers need our report, our accounting report. Our managers need accounting report. 
so that they can decide for this discretionary fixed cost. Example, advertising cost, research and development cost. They can decide in order to alter the cost or expenses of the company. Okay. Trend toward fixed cost. The trend in many industries is toward greater fixed cost relative to variable cost. As machine take over, many mundane tasks, mundane tasks meaning simple work. Uh, previously performed by humans, knowledge workers are demanded for their minds rather than their muscles. So knowledge workers tend to be salaried, highly trained, and difficult to replace. The cost to compensate these valued employees is relatively fixed rather than variable because they have fixed salary, monthly salary. Whether they work or not, they have fixed salary. Okay. Is labor a variable or a fixed cost? The behavior of wage and salary cost can differ across countries, depending on labor law, okay, contracts, and uh, what tradition. In uh, France, Germany, and China, and Japan, management has little flexibility in adjusting the size of the labor force. Labor costs are more fixed in nature. France, Germany, China, and Japan. That is traditional. Most companies in the United States continue to view direct labor as variable cost. Um, it is different uh, in the United States. Fixed cost and relevant trends. Again, we already presented the concept and we have what uh, rented area versus rent cost in thousand dollars. We have what different uh, range. And as you can see, there is a middle uh, red line that says relevant trend. So meaning from this uh, to this point, that is the relevant trend. Total cost doesn't change for a wide range of activity, then jumps to a new higher cost for the next higher range of activity. So the relevant trends could give us the idea. What are we talking about? Are we talking about a, a rented area between 1,000 to 2,000? That is on the middle. But if we are talking of less than 1,000, that is the lower, the lower red line. Okay. Uh, Fixed cost and relevant trains. The relevant trains of activity for a fixed cost is the range of activity over which the graph of the cost is flat. Example, office space is available at a rental rate of $30,000 per year in increments of 1,000 square feet. So this is in the United States. As a business grows, more space is rented, increasing the total cost. So uh, dependent upon the square feet, or 1,000 square feet, so therefore, uh, uh, it is fixed at a certain relevant range. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, we have this one, no? fixed cost at relevant range. Uh, if we look at the next range, so more than 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000 square feet, another relevant range. 2,000 to 3,000 things, another relevant things. Okay, so how it uh, works. How does this type of fixed cost differ from step variable cost? Of course, it is different because step variable cost can be adjusted more quickly and the width of activity steps is much wider for the fixed, okay? For example, 1,000 square feet the unit 1000 is what wider step okay wider step because if uh, uh, we rent 
between uh, 2,000 and 3,000, the rent will jump uh, very what? Very abruptly. Okay. okay. Let's check our knowledge from uh, what we learned today. Which of the following statements about cost behavior are true? Letter A, fixed cost per unit vary with the level of activity. Letter B, variable cost per unit are constant within the relevant range. Letter C, total fixed cost are constant within the relevant range. And letter D, total variable cost are constant within the relevant range. <laughs> total variable cost are constant. So I think that is the one that is not correct. So therefore, the answer would be A, B, and C. Okay? Okay? If you uh, have a question, you can use our comment box below and uh, we'll try to get back on you. Let's continue to mix cost. Mix cost meaning it has both fixed and variable components. Okay? For example, utility cost. We have fixed monthly charge, but also after that, after some uh, maximum, we have what? Variable cost. For example, in this figure, we have what? Kilowatt hours, total utility cost. So for example, this one is for what? For uh, power uh, supply companies. Huh? So uh, we have fixed monthly utility, utility charge. But if you reach that uh, minimum, after that, the, the cost would be uh, variable. Okay? If you are within the, the uh, minimum, then even if you, for example, if the minimum is 10 kilowatt hours or uh, 100 kilowatt hours, for example, minimum. If your family consumes 30 kilowatt hours, the same payment could be made uh, with a family that consumes 80 kilowatt hours and another family with 90 kilowatt hours because all of you are within the minimum of 100 kilowatt hours. The same payment have to be made. So that is an example of uh, this uh, mixed cost. But after 100 kilowatt hours, if your family consume now, for example, 120 kilowatt hours, 100 kilowatt hours is fixed, but the added 20 is more than the minimum. Therefore, that has a what? An additional charge per kilowatt. We have what? Cost per kilowatt. Okay, added. So the total mix cost line can be expressed as an equation. We can uh, use our algebra to express this uh, equation. Which one? This uh, this diagonal red line. This diagonal red line is actually this equation. Y is equal to A plus BX. Y is the total mixed cost. A is the total fixed cost. Okay? B is the variable cost per unit activity. And X is the level of activity. Okay? So because of this, please be reminded of this. This is just the use of algebra. We are using algebra into actual practice. Fixed cost example, uh, if your fixed monthly utility charge is $40, your variable cost is 0 0.03 per kilowatt hour, and your monthly activity level is 2,000 kilowatt hours, the amount of your utility bill is, using that equation, y is equal to a plus bx, so a is the uh, fixed monthly, so that is a, and y therefore is equal to 40 plus B is the 
uh, amount per kilowatt. So that is 0 0.03. And X is the, uh, your uh, activity level or X. So 2000 is your activity level, which is X. So if you substitute all of this, you have to pay $100 rather than fixed amount of $40. $40 is a fixed amount. But you, uh, you consume more than the minimum. Okay? So you have to pay more. Analysis of fixed cost. Account analysis. Each account is classified as either variable or fixed based on analyst knowledge of how the account behaves. Engineering approach. Cost estimates are based on an evaluation of production method, material, labor, and overhead requirements. So there are what? Two different perspectives. So we are technical, you are BSIT, so maybe you can use engineering approach because that is a technical engineering and the IT uh, are on the same group. We are on the same group, engineering approach. However, because uh, we are uh, teaching you how to uh, do the financial accounting, how to do the managerial accounting, you can also use account analysis. Okay? So you have the choice now. You have the alternative analysis method. Okay? And uh, this uh, slide would end our first module for this present chapter. Again, this is Dr. AP, Preaching Engineering Coordination Building.